over the short term, I believe that the recession fact and the, the fact that people are scared and all of those things is going to be the dominant kind of emotional state that's going to affect things. But over the long term, this kind of displacement and people starting to understand the online world is what's going to be kind of the lasting impact here of this. And so that means over the short term, it sucks for everybody. Over the long term, it's going to be good to be us as online entrepreneurs because we are well placed to deal with this displacement. Welcome to the Certified Badass Online Marketing Podcast, where being a badass has less to do with what you wear and what music you listen to and everything to do with whether you've got the thriving online business of your dreams. I'm your renegade thinking Harvard Law grad turned online entrepreneur host, Bobby Clay. In my years building my thriving business, the most important lesson I've learned is that being a badass online marketer isn't about secret strategies or ninja tactics. It's about doing the basic stuff right and showing the F up. So each week here on the show, you'll get clear, easy to execute guidance on how to build your online business and a swift kick in the ass or two to make sure you're getting it done. Hey there, welcome to episode 154 of the Certified Badass Online Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Clink. And in today's show, we're going to be diving into a subject that we really need to talk about. Specifically, this week's episode is marketing in the time of COVID. In other words, what do you need to be doing? What do you not need to be doing? Do you need to be changing things? How should you think about building your online business right now? Now, I've done a couple of shorter episodes on this topic. I've done some things about whether you should sell or not sell. And, and I've given some kind of, you know, uh, Friday kick in the pants type of episode. But I've never done since this whole thing happened a full blown episode, a Tuesday episode. And I decided in talking with my team that this is an issue that's important. It's an issue we need to talk about. It's an issue that you need information, you need my thoughts on. And so we decided to do a full-on episode. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to give you the good. I'm going to give you the bad. I'm going to give you the ugly. I'm going to give you everything. I've been talking about these issues. I've been giving kind of these, um, you know, kind of inspiration, if you will, some, some et cetera. But, but I also did a, a Facebook Live I don't know, a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, maybe now, once this goes live, that I called the state of the online marketing something. I don't, reunion, I guess. And I got a lot of great feedback on that because I think people enjoyed that I was being honest and not blowing smoke up their rear ends because I'm going to be, you know, 100% honest with you. Anybody who's telling you that right now is a great time to be an online entrepreneur is full of it and you should run away. Now, if what they mean is it's better to be an online entrepreneur than a brick and mortar business, I'm with you. But now is not a great time to be just about anything other than the owner of Amazon and the owner of Instacart. Those are about the only things that it's a great time to be right now. And so I'm going to be honest with you in this episode, but I'm also going to tell you what you can do. Where are the kind of opportunities? Where are the things that you should be doing? How should you be spending your time right now? So that's what we're going to dive into. That's what I've got on tap. Now, if you're sitting here saying, what, you know, wondering what's going on and why this is episode 154 and why last Friday's episode wasn't episode 154, we've made a slight change here. What we're doing now, the Tuesday episodes are going to be our numbered episodes. These kind of full-on episodes that are the standard things, these are the ones we're recording in advance, like always, but the Friday episodes, we decided to tweak slightly. So the Friday episodes, and it started last week with last Friday's episode, I'm doing them live on Facebook on Fridays on my page at noon at 12 o'clock. So what happens is I, I go on, I do a Facebook live and we use a certain hashtag. And when we do that, the system we've got called repurpose.io will pull the live after I'm done, adds the, the, the intro and the outro, and then uploads it. So it's still going to be there 
on your favorite podcast episode, but not Friday morning first thing. And it's not going to have episode numbers. So I just wanted to do this. We're doing it because we're trying some things. And it's part of what I'm going to be talking about today and, and what we're seeing. But it's also part of something that we've wanted to do more broadly, which is to kind of, you know, serve people where they are and serve people in multiple formats. And so that's what we're doing with our Friday episode. So from now on, these Tuesday episodes stay exactly the same, recorded in advance, edited, uploaded, show notes, all the good stuff, and they get show numbers. Show notes. Uh, yeah, um, episode numbers. Friday episodes live on my Facebook page. So they'll, they'll kind of go up on your podcast player on Friday afternoon sometime. But join me on my page. If you're on Facebook, go over to just the Bobby Clink page, not my profile, but the page. And I'm going to go live at noon. Again, same kind of content for those episodes, same kind of idea of those are kind of the, the hey, let's actually do some stuff. Let, let's, you know, not, it's not a deep dive on something. It's going to be a short tidbit or a let's get some things done or a, a kind of swift kick in the rear end if that's what you need. So that's what the Friday episodes are, and that's what we're going to be doing. Now, with that, let's go ahead and dive into today, to today's episode, where we're talking about marketing in the time of COVID. And at the beginning here, I, I mentioned that I'm not going to blow smoke up your rear end and tell you that now is a great time to be an entrepreneur or be an online entrepreneur. Okay. So I'm, I'm not going to do that. I want to start by talking about some things that we all need to kind of acknowledge that we all need to come to grips with. Now, if you don't agree with me on these things, I mean, one, I think you're, you're ignoring reality, but you're probably not going to maybe follow me for the rest of the episode. And these aren't things that should be all that controversial, but I'm going to give you some evidence of it to make sure that you, you know, are kind of seeing what I'm seeing. So first of all, we have to acknowledge that COVID and the situation we're dealing with in some form or fashion is going to be with us for a while. Now, even under the best case scenario, even under the best assumptions, there are some, you know, I've heard some reports that there's some like Cambridge University in England is working on, you know, some vaccine that they think might be approved by the fall, by late fall, but they don't believe that they would actually have it in production. So even by the best case scenario that just about anybody is talking about, this is going to be with us at least through the end of this year. And I think that's being very optimistic. And I'm not the only one. I mean, let me, let's just talk about some facts. Now, some states, as I'm recording this, are starting to try to re relax the, the restrictions on stay-at-home orders. Tends to be the southern states and the, the western states for the most part. Um, but there are a lot of states that remain on lockdown. Here in Washington, D.C., I don't expect our lockdown order to end until at least sometime in June, if not later. There are some states that have already had lockdown orders, you know, that are in place until June. So there are going to be states that are in this kind of place where we are right now for at least another month to month and a half. And that's the best case scenario. But there are a lot of people who are planning that life is not back to normal even after that. For example, a lot of major universities have started and have put plans into place to be ready to use distance learning in the fall. Now, they're not saying that's what's going to happen, but they have contingency plans in place. And the reason why I think that's relevant is if you'll put your mind back to thinking through kind of what happened here in the United States, at least, with kind of the coronavirus and things like that, the universities are kind of, were kind of the canaries in the coal mine. I remember the thing that made me, like, at first I thought it was like an Onion article. It was like this notice that Harvard had told its students not to come back from spring break and that they had to clear out of their dorms in like five days. And this was in early March. 
And I thought, no, wait, what? And Harvard basically said, we are canceling on campus for the rest of the year. So the universities were some of the first ones to see what was happening. Now, I don't know why that is. I don't think it's necessarily because they're smarter. I think it's because they're realists and they recognize they have to make these plans. But they were the ones who kind of saw things early on the shutdown to begin with. And so I look at this when I hear reports that they are putting plans into place to be ready for distance learning in the fall. I say, hmm, they might just know something. Now, there are some other things you might see, though, for example. And one of them is that, you know, look, I, I, I'm a, I, I grew up in Texas, so football matters to me. And I've heard a lot of people talking that the consensus is that during the football season, if there is a football season in 2020 for college football, there probably aren't going to be fans in the stand. And again, if you're one of my listeners who follows college football, you understand that that is, that's a big thing. I mean, that is big news. In places like Austin, where, where you know, I went to college at the University of Texas, College football Saturday is a big deal. I mean, they have a, a stadium that has 105, 110,000 people. I don't know how many, but it's, a, you know, it's somewhere above 100,000. And I'm just saying, if the universities are thinking that way, if the sports leagues are thinking that way, again, canary in the coal mine. Now, another thing that you might think about is that Facebook has made an announcement and I saw this, you know, I don't know where they first made the announcement, but I saw it. They were, um, uh, Zuckerberg and, and, and his wife were on a CNN town hall recently, and they announced that they have already made the decision. Facebook has declared that they will not host any internal or external gatherings of more than 50 people until at least 2022. Yeah, you heard that right. 2022. They're talking two years, and they've already put this policy into place. Again, I tend to think that those big companies, a big company like Facebook that has a ton of data, has a ton of information, might know a thing or two, might be a canary in a coal mine. Now, I'm not saying that they're geniuses or brilliant and that they know everything, but I'm simply saying I see academia, I see sports, I see social media all having these same kind of general thoughts, and it says to me... Okay, I believe you. But more importantly, what I think everybody needs to realize is even as states open up, I don't know about you, but my family and I, we're not about to start running out and, and you know, going and, and, you know, going back to normal. I don't know a lot of people who are planning that. Now, there are some people who have those plans. But, you know, my wife and I already talked about it. And at the beginning of this, like she was talking about how she couldn't wait until we could go out to eat again. But I talked to her recently. She said, yeah, I can't imagine going to a restaurant when they open up again. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to take her. I mean, the way she's thinking now is it'll be nice when when we get kind of an, an all clear from, from the public health people that maybe we can have our friends from down the street over for dinner again. I mean, these are the things that my wife is now thinking about. That is to her what opening up is going to be about. And so I give you that simply so that you need to understand there is going to be a lot of that going on. And as long as there's that kind of concern from people, we're going to continue to deal with COVID and this new reality. So that's the first thing that we've got to be on the same page about that this is going to last for, you know, a, a while. I think it's a conservative estimate to say that before next spring, we're going to be back to kind of normal. And that means traveling and doing all the things that we would have done before. Now, the other thing that we all have to acknowledge, and I think everyone would, is that we are in a recession. As I'm recording this over the last, you know, four job reports, I think it's been, there have been 22 million jobs lost. By the time this goes live, another jobs report will have come out. I suspect will be north of 25 million jobs lost here in the United States in the course of five weeks. Now, that means our unemployment rate here in the United States will have jumped to 15% or thereabouts in a matter of five weeks from like 3.5% to 15%. That's a big deal. Air travel down by 95%. And again, let's think about this for a second. Even when things start to open up, 
I don't think most people are going to be running back to get on airplanes. Packed airplanes are not going to be the place I'm going to be. Um, so those are the kinds of things to think about. Oil. Again, I'm recording this uh, close to the air date. Not not the week of, but close to the air date. Um, the, the day before I recorded this, oil, for the first time, I think ever, was negative. Meaning the futures, people were paying you. Producers were willing to pay people who would take oil off their hands. And now again, you couldn't go and get like, you know, one drum. You had to buy like, you know, you had to take 100 million barrels or some ridiculously large amounts. But think about that for a second. Oil producers in the United States are saying, we will pay you to take the oil off our hands. That's a big thing. And what all of this means, again, I don't, you know, people have different definitions of the word recession. Some would say you've got to have like a contraction of GDP over two quarters and and the economists, et cetera, can argue about that. But we're in a recession. No matter what you want to say, we are. And the reality of that and why that matters is that we have to acknowledge this fact. When we are in a recession, no matter what causes that recession, there is a human behavior that is very common, and that is that people tighten up with their spending, okay? It is a universal truth. People do it because if you're see, even if you're not affected directly by a recession, you see the other people who are, and it kind of leads to a concern. And when you're concerned, oftentimes you're not going to want to spend because you want to hoard. Now, it's a natural human reaction, et cetera. Um, it's the fight or flight response probably is what a psycholo- psychiatrist would tell you. Whatever it is. It is something that happens in every recession. So that's why kind of recessions can become like self-fulfilling prophecies, if you will. When you have people who are concerned about the job, they don't spend. And when they don't spend, by the way, guess what that does? That causes the economy to hurt even more. That's why the government right now is doing everything in its power to try to get money out there to make people spend and do all of these things because the government recognizes that the worst thing is to have this kind of vicious cycle of concern. Now, I'm simply going to tell you, people are doing it, people are seeing it. And if you look at your own life, you know, you have to ask what you're doing. Now, I don't know about you, I haven't specifically tightened up our spending, but I know we are spending less now than we were before, partly because we're on lockdown, so we can't do the things we would have done before. But all of that money that's not spent is money that's not going into the economy. Like, I'm not traveling. I mean, I was joking that that my, my business expenses will be down this year because I'm not traveling for business. I mean, I went on one mastermind retreat, and I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping that at least the third one will happen. But that's probably like, you know, the only travel I'm going to have left this year is maybe one more mastermind retreat. And that's a difference. And so all of that is money that otherwise would have gone into the economy and would have been circulating, go to GDP, et cetera. It's not. So that's kind of the reality of a recession. So that's kind of, those are the two bad pieces of news. One, this is going to last. Two, we're in a recession. Now, the third thing, though, that we need to acknowledge is a good fact. It's something that, that, that shines some brightness over the long term. And that is that there are more people than ever who are experiencing the online world and the online space that you and I have been inhabiting for some time now. People are working virtually for the first time ever. We're seeing all of these like jokes and memes about uh, Zoom and people going to meetings. I mean, there's one going around where like, you know, someone didn't realize that they had, they were on video and went to the bathroom and had the, the laptop showing and everybody was watching them get on the toilet. I mean, things like that are kind of happening. And that's the funny part. But the bigger part is that people and businesses are experiencing the virtual world. And they're experiencing in a lot of ways, and some of it for the first time ever. And again, like, like I'm going to come back to my wife here. There's this funny example. Like, my wife has, um, you know, she has a, a, a close-knit group of girlfriends that tended to get together for drinks, I don't know, like every week, every couple of weeks, something like that, you know, before this all happened. And now that this has happened, 
they've had a couple of Zoom meetings, like, you know, just sitting out on their, you know, my wife sits out on our back patio and, and Zoom does a Zoom meeting. And like one of them was like for her birthday. So I guess it's three times. Now one of them was for my wife's birthday. We set all this up. But the last time my wife came and she was like, she wanted to set one up. She said, hey, how do we do a Zoom meeting? And I said, well, you just send them to, and I gave her to like my vanity URL because I have just a standard meeting that my team and I use, et cetera. And my wife was like, like, she was like, wait, but it doesn't have to be, she was confused. She thought it had to be one of those weird, ugly Zoom links. I said, no, no, it, it, this is just a redirect. So I had to explain the whole thing. It took her a while. But then I get her signed on. And then she comes back after a while and says, well, I can hear him, but I can't see him. Because she had the internet up, but not the Zoom app. So again, I had to help her. And I use this not to like, you know, make my wife, you know, sound like she, she doesn't use technology. That's not the point. The point is most people don't use Zoom. And so she was experiencing this for the first time. And what what I want you to understand is I, I honestly believe that this stay at home and this shift to virtual work is also something that is going to last. Now, not to the extent it is now, but we are going to have some kind of the displacement and shifts in how work is done and how people approach things. And that's going to give us online entrepreneurs over the long term an opportunity. Now, notice there I said over the long term. And what I mean there is I am distinguishing between the short term and the long term. Over the short term, I believe that the recession fact and the, the fact that people are scared and all of those things is going to be the dominant kind of emotional state that's going to affect things. But over the long term, this kind of displacement and people starting to understand the online world is what's going to be kind of the, the lasting impact here of this. And so that means over the short term, it sucks for everybody. Over the long term, it's going to be good to be us as online entrepreneurs because we are well-placed to deal with this displacement. So those are kind of the three big things I want us to acknowledge. Now let's talk about what that means. So there's a couple of things I want to talk about. And the first one is kind of the issue of selling. And I've already done a whole podcast episode about this, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. But we can't just not sell. And the reason we can't just not sell is because this is going to last for a long time. Now, a lot of people at the beginning of this thought, okay, I'm just going to not sell for, like, I'm going to put off my launch for a month. Or I'm going to put off my launch for a month and a half. Thinking that that would, like, you know, that everything would be back to normal. <laughs> and so those people, uh, you know, who made that decision in, like, mid-March, guess what? They're launching now. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think things are better now than they were in mid-March. I don't know that they're worse, but they're definitely not better. And so I give you this so that you understand, like, this is not a time where we can simply say, well, we're not going to sell ever. Now, you may have to make some adjustments. If you, for example, serve brick and mortar businesses, you have to think about is now the right time to launch or maybe should you push it back depending on what your service is. I mean, if your service is something, I know someone in a membership that I'm in who like basically helps people um, with marketing and basically pitched, look, now that you can't be working in your business, now's the time to be working on your business. You've got time, now's the time to do it. And people took her up on that offer. So you might be able to do that. But again, understand that those people are hurting. They don't have revenue coming in. A lot of them don't at least. And so, you know, you need to think that through. But um, if you don't fall into that category, you probably don't need to be adjusting your schedule for promotions. Now, and what I mean by that is if you were planning to sell, you're going to sell. If you were planning to launch, you're going to launch. But here's what I do want you to say. Although we can't not sell, we have to acknowledge that right now selling is harder than it would have been had coronavirus not been here. Now, again, there are exceptions to every rule. One of my friends in my mastermind has a course that's all about sanitizing your house. Well, guess what? That's going to be easier to sell right now probably than it would have been. But for the rest of us, 
The dominant fact is probably going to be that we're in a recession, people are getting nervous, et cetera. Now, we definitely saw that in our launch when I launched the Fans First Society with, with the, the badass email marketing program as part of it. What, what, and the way I've described it is people who would have been on the fence – in a normal launch and would have broken some yes, some no, they were all clear no's. They were just, nope, not going to happen. But the core people, the people who, you know, would have bought anyway, I believe bought, except for the people who were there on the fringes. I don't know the impact, but I've talked to other people who've said that, you know, there was an impact. Now, I want to say I was also launching right when the ish was hitting the fan. So people, at that point, I think the fear was even a bigger issue. People were even more nervous than I think they are now. So I don't know. Maybe if I would have pushed it back, it would have been better. But if it would have been earlier, it would have been better. I don't know for sure. But I definitely believe, from what I've heard, from all of the people I've talked to, from my peers, that selling is, you know, I mean, look, we have to right-size our expectations, is what I would say. And what's happening is, is good products are still selling. Good services are still selling. But it's kind of like the old analogy or or the old um, metaphor, I guess it is, um, that I think Warren Buffett is credited with saying this. I don't know if he actually did, but but it's this statement that when the tide goes out, you see who's skinny dipping. And in other words, like when times are bad, that's when you can see people who don't have the right foundations built. And, And that's true in everything. And I believe it's true now. Now, if you have a product where your messaging isn't right, where it's not the right offer, where it's not quite right, where you don't have the right sales mechanism, where you don't have your copy dialed in, where you don't have all those things, you're going to have trouble selling because people are being more, you know, kind of really looking more carefully. Now, if you have the right product for the right people with the right offer, the right messaging and all of that stuff, you're still going to be able to sell. But here's the point. Because selling is going to be harder, because people are looking more carefully, because people are looking more closely at all of the things they're buying, you've got to make sure that your offer is dialed in, that your messaging is dialed in, that your launch vehicle is dialed in, that all of that is really dialed in. So now more than ever, you have to make sure that you're doing this whole online marketing thing right. And so that's an important thing to be thinking about. Now, another thing, though, that it means is that people are online looking around a lot more now than they were earlier. I mean, literally, the traffic that people are seeing today versus a month ago or two months ago, I guess, is very different. There is a lot more social media traffic. People are, are, you know, raking it in with list building, I mean, a lot of people are basically, you know, looking at freebies, downloading freebies, getting on people's lists, doing all those things. They're, they're kicking the tires, if you will. There's a lot of that going on, which tells me people are spending more time online. And I see it in our community. Like in my Facebook group, I'm seeing a lot of things like more in-depth conversations. Like, you know, our community was good and was engaged, et cetera. But I'm seeing a lot of really in-depth kind of engagement at a very deep level in my Facebook communities right now. And I'm talking my free groups and my paid groups and everything. So I'm seeing a lot of that. So I'm seeing a lot of people who are, you know, kind of coming into community. And part of that makes sense, right? If, If we're not able to go be with our friends, we are trying to be parts of communities even more online. So community building and and those types of things are really happening at a higher level online. Now, another thing, though, that is kind of an offshoot of this fact that people are online and looking more and on social media more, et cetera, is that Facebook ad costs are way down. I've heard this from every social media manager I've talked to. I've heard it from the, my friends in my mastermind. You know, one of them posted something about how uh, for a launch that that person is doing right now, like the cost to get into a launch vehicle are insanely low. Like in, in a space where normally kind of it would be, you know, comparable prices to mine, this person was getting uh, launch leads at at the same cost that I was traditionally getting 
like plain old privacy policy leads. So plain old, like just coming a lead into my system, which is amazing. Now, we had been tinkering with things. I'd been, you know, tinkering with, with my my ads for my free privacy policy and, and, and I had brought costs down. And I say I brought, I mean, costs had come down 30% or so on the ads I was running, but we also have a fa Facebook ads manager who spun up some new ads. And, and again, I don't understand everything about the algorithms, but I do understand that sometimes, like, if you have a baked in cost per lead, it could be hard to get that to change significantly. So uh, th this Facebook ads manager, you know, created a new campaign that's slightly different and is getting me $1 leads at the moment. I haven't seen, I know in some spaces, $1 leads, is, it would be expensive or whatever. That's normal. In my space, that is not normal. I am getting leads on my list to download a legal thing for online entrepreneurs for $1 per lead. That is unheard of. I mean, it's, it is 65 to percent lower than what my average lead cost was. Now, again, we'll see if that lasts. We'll see how long it lasts, but we're seeing it right now. And so, again, I, I tell you that so you are seeing there are opportunities, right? There are things that we can be doing right now where right now is, is the reason. Now, what I'll tell you is I think that Facebook ad cost being down is a feature of a couple things. One, more people are online on social media, so that's part of it. But also a lot of people, remember one of the things I said that when we're in a recession, people tend to tighten up. A lot of the other people who were advertising have tightened up, have stopped. And so the competition for ads is less. That means that those of us who are continuing to spend money on Facebook ads are getting better results. So again, I gave you that as food for thought. Now might be a time for you to think about advertising on Facebook. I, I, I mean, you have to decide, you have to make those decisions for yourself, but it could be a good time to do that. But with, with those kind of what it all means, et cetera, now I want to tell you kind of what I would say are kind of a four-part plan, if you will, for what you should be doing in your business right now, okay? First of all, what I want you to understand is no matter what your business, your messaging can't simply ignore what's going on in the world. Again, you've probably noticed, I've done multiple podcasts about this. My emails, I've talked about COVID and coronavirus and all these things because it would be really weird to not talk about it. But you also have to, to understand and, and you have to be genuine and talk about it in your voice, whatever that means, whatever that is. But also, I want to be clear. You may make some mistakes, I made a mistake, I, you know, and I don't know that I made a mistake that it was horrible, but, you know, I sent out an email during the whole thing that wasn't even necessarily about, I mean, it wasn't about coronavirus. It, it was not about that at all, but some people thought it was insensitive in light of what was happening in the world. And this was one of the rare exceptions. Normally, when I have people get mad at me for an email, an equal number are moved by it, love it, and think, yes, this was great. And it's purely a, I am not that person's cup of tea, but I am that person's cup of tea. So it's, you know, look, to attract the right person, you have to repel the wrong person. This was one of those, this was kind of an exception to that. Because for people who, who didn't see it, 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 it was not a particularly notable email. But for people who were offended by it, it was very offensive. Like literally someone, and I can only assume this is why it was, this, you know, after I send this email, there was this one person who went back and literally like must have searched through their email box, email inbox or something and marked like the last eight or 10 emails I'd sent as spam. I mean, think about that. That is like vindictive to a new level. But apparently I had gone too far. And so I want you to understand that you might do something that, that, that might offend people. It's going to happen. And, you know, I did soul searching after that. I decided that email wasn't wrong, but I'll do better. You know, I will think about it in these times. But I think what matters is being genuine. So what I mean by that is, like, there were a lot of people who, when this started coming out and all this, I mean, people started putting out, like, you know, I mean, they rushed out with, ooh, I've got a coronavirus offer or, or you know, like something where they, they were 
it just looked opportunistic, not being genuine about it. Now, I hope that you hear my message, you see the way I talk about it as purely being every, like everything else I do. I see what's happening in the market. I see trends and I want to serve you and my audience in the best way possible. So I talk about what's happening. And that's what's going on here. You'll, you'll notice I haven't had a coronavirus offer. I haven't had anything like that. Now, one of the things I've done is, is I have much, d- done much more live writing of emails than I otherwise would have. Partly, I think, because my you know early on, my mind was distracted by it. But also because I realized if I write an email two weeks out, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's crazy because things are changing so fast that trying to write an email two weeks out right now was crazy. Now, I'm hoping that that passes, right? That we'll get to the point that I can actually start doing things further in advance again, at least with like launches and promo emails and those kinds of things. But, you know, for the time being, I haven't been because I've wanted to be genuine. I've wanted to, to, to really kind of, um, you know, be there in the moment and be able to address what's happening in the moment. And you should too. You should, you know, make sure that that when you're talking, when you're thinking about things, that you're being genuine and addressing what's happening because everybody's here and dealing with it. Now, it doesn't mean you dwell on it. It doesn't mean you're talking about it all the time because nobody wants to, to be, you know, Debbie Downer all the time. So don't do that, but do be genuine about it. Now, the second part of kind of the four part plan that I would recommend for almost everybody is now is a great time to do the behind the scenes work. Are there things in your business that you've been putting off that for one reason or another, like you just haven't gotten it done? Well, if so, now is a really good time to do this. Now, I also want to give you some grace. If you are dealing with homeschooling kids and you don't have help, and and so all of a sudden you're actually worse off than you were before because you have, you know, responsibilities with your kids in addition to work, I understand that. And and I don't want to be insensitive to that. But my point is that if now is not the time that you feel like, you know, if selling is harder now in the short term, et cetera, well, you know, now is a great time to be building that course that you've wanted to build for a long time, to redo funnels that maybe you're like, ah, that needs to be redone, to redo emails that maybe, you you know, have been sitting for a while in sequences and need to be redone. Maybe it's you want to build a membership site. Obviously, as this is going live, we are in in the middle. My friend Stu McLaren is in the middle of his um, workshop for Tribe. Again, we'll have a, a, um, a link in the show notes, but you can go to bobbyclink.com forward slash tribe workshop if you want to, to look into that and, and know a membership site. But that's something you can be doing. But it's also maybe a great time to be creating content, to be doing these things, to, to set up systems in your business. Like if you need to set up, you know, standard operating procedures or things like that, now is a great time to do that. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. It's the kind of thing that a lot of us entrepreneurs aren't great at doing because we have that squirrel brain, you know, the the chasing a shiny object. Well, in some ways, I joke that, you know, I kind of joke that it only took a worldwide pandemic for me to actually focus on these things because it it forced forced me to slow down. But if you're like me, now would be a great time for you to use this time that we have to get the stuff done that we are not great at doing, creating the systems, creating the process, you know, maybe, you know, just getting off your rear end and creating that product that you've been talking about for a long time. So do the behind the scenes work. That's part two or step two of what I would say needs to be done. Step three, build your audience the right way. Now, this is nothing new, but here's what I'm going to tell you. The things that I preach about kind of, you know, what, what I call my fans framework of find, attract, nurture, and serve, where, where selling comes at the serve phase, is more important now than ever. What I mean is that remember when I talked about selling being harder. Selling is harder But if people know you, like you, and trust you, if you have a deep connection with your audience, they're going to buy. Now, if they have financial issues that prevent them from being able to buy, maybe they aren't. But the people who, you know, if you think about it, 
people are are looking at at things more closely, but if they trust you, if they know you, if they like you, if you are their people, they're going to keep buying from you. So, so it kind of highlights the fact that this way of doing business that I have been preaching for a year now works. It's the way to long-term success. It's the way to recession-proof your business. Because if you have this deep relationship and if you have raving fans, they're still going to buy from you. So when I say build your audience the right way, that's what I'm saying you do. Like I talked about, right now is a great time to attract people into your world with social media content, with content, with with freebies, with Facebook ads, if you have the wherewithal to do that. So you attract them into your world, and if you do it right, you get them into your world, but you don't do what some people do, which is they get them into the world, and then they say, bye, 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 and they're trying to sell you know, their signature product right then. Now, again, I'm not saying that evergreen webinars are, are wrong or bad, and I'm not saying that you can't try to sell things up front. I mean, I have a tripwire where, where I try to sell a $27 offer right up front when someone gets my privacy policy. But what I'm going to say is that the more important thing is to have the long game. Get them into your world. And especially now, like if you can get your get Facebook ads, like I'm looking at is I can get $1 leads right now. Hey, Arfan, my Facebook ads manager, can you get me as many of those as possible? Because if those people come into my world, I know I'm going to convert them. Now I'm going to nurture them over time. I'm going to invest in them. I'm going to send them emails. I'm going to give them great content. I'm going to give them great freebies. I'm going to build the connections. I'm going to build the relationship. I'm going to turn those people into raving fans. And I'm going to invest. I look at building my audience right now as investing. And so we're talking about a lot of things in my business. And again, I don't want to give it all away, but I was talking to Katie, my integrator today, and, and we, we are kicking around an idea of something we're looking at this summer to really go deep, to go deep in providing so much value to my community in a very specific way um, to really kind of help them with a lot of things. And I'm talking about in the podcast, in my Facebook group with emails, kind of all across the board, giving and, and creating this unbelievable value and doing it in a way that kind of takes everything I've talked about and brings it together. I talked about people want community right now. People are looking for people they can trust. People are looking closely at things. People are, are downloading freebies. People are doing all these things. So I'm going to basically say, how do I use that knowledge to help, to serve, and to build my business all at once? And that's all about building your audience building the connections and doing it the right way. So I'm going to be doing my fans framework, find, attract, nurture, serve. And I'm going to be doing a lot of serving that isn't even selling. That's just serving and serving alone. Now I'm going to sell, but I'm going to do a lot of that service too. So that, that that's the, the third point. Build your audience and do it the right way using kind of this fans framework that I talk about all the time of really taking the time to nurture your people once they're in your world. And then the final piece is to sell, but don't make big bets. And what I mean by that is, you know, I don't know. I can't tell you when it is that I'm going to feel comfortable personally, you know, making an investment in like a big signature launch. Now, luckily, I don't have one of those personally scheduled for my business for some time. We are talking about it, Katie and I. Are, we're going to do some promotions. We're going to do some things here and there. You know, we've got some affiliate promotions going on now, and some more for people that that you know have made a huge impact in my life and in my business. But my next signature launch, which is where I would potentially make big bets, meaning I would make big investments in Facebook ads, etc., those aren't coming for a while for me. And what I I want to stress to people is that. When I said you're going to, you have to sell because we can't shrink back. I mean, it's going to be too long to just not sell, to say, oh, no, no, I'm not going to sell until this is over. You can't do that. But you need to right size your expectations. And what I mean by that is simply this 
If you are someone who, you know, if you're going to launch a product that you've already launched and traditionally you've, your earnings per lead have been, let's say, $30. So for every person who comes into your launch, on average, you make $30. Well, in a normal world, if you could spend $15, $20 for a lead, it would be worth it because you have a track record that tells you you're still going to make money on those people. Now, again, you don't want all your leads to cost that much, but even those costs marginally would be okay. Here's the problem. Right now, any like any history you have of, of what you made earnings per lead in prior launches, I wouldn't rely on that today because we have no idea what's going on. Right now, everything is all over the place. It is wacky. It is just kind of it like the market is very volatile. And so you don't know what's going to happen. Now, the second piece is even if you were using averages and things like that, you would need to be careful. Now, I'm the kind of guy who tends to go all in to say, you know, fire, ready, aim. You've probably heard my story of my first failed launch where I spent, you know, like 25 grand total and everything and, and, and made one sale for 600 and something dollars. So that, that's my general tendency. I've gotten better about that. But now is a time where I would be very cautious about those things. I would be very cautious about making big investments in a launch or in a sales or anything. And I mean that across the board. I mean that in, in terms of like, you know, hiring a, a, you know, copywriter to write copy. Now, you know, if it's something you're really not good at, you've got to outsource that. But be aware and, and make sure that this is copy that can last for the long term. I mean it in terms of Facebook ads. I mean it in terms of everything you're doing. Just be conscientious and right-size your expectations. And the other piece, though, of this is understand that at the same time, whatever happens now, like, and again, I don't know how long this is going to last, but I'm going to say, you know, if you're doing, you know, sales and promotions, say, you know, May, June, July, I wouldn't assume that that kind of, that you're going to learn a lot of great information there that you can then extrapolate out to what's going to happen in November or next year. And what I mean by that is like, you might find that, you know, you have the launch that maybe didn't go great this time, but it'll perform fine in November. Who knows? So I just want to caution you, don't make big bets and understand that you're going to have a lot of noise in your data. In other words, in the results that come back, they're going to be results for what they are. And what I mean simply is, you know, theoretically, we should be analyzing our data, we should be doing launch debriefs, and you need to do all that anyway. But I'm not sure that you can take information you get now and extrapolate it out. I'll just tell you, like, candidly, in, in our business, we're seeing really weird things I would not have expected. Like, my legal templates appear to be selling better. Like, people are just coming and buying them randomly. The business stuff, you know, has taken, a, you know, has, has slowed down a bit. I, I don't know that I would have expected that. I don't know what I would have expected. But I don't necessarily expect that that will continue forever. So I just want you to understand you need to have the right size expectations going in and find ways to try to maximize value right now, but don't necessarily go overboard with a launch. That's my personal advice. That's what we're doing. And that's what I'm recommending to, to everyone who's asking me my opinion. Launch, do all the things. And again, I'm not saying don't spend money on Facebook ads. I'm, I'm clearly not. I'm spending money on Facebook ads. I just do Facebook ads differently than most people. Most of my money in Facebook ads comes in the form of investing today to get a lead that I expect to make money from, you know, any big sale six months from now. That's been my model for a long time, and it's serving me well. I would suggest that right now might be a time to really look at that model, sell in the meantime, but understand that you can really clean up bringing the leads in now and expecting to sell, say, you know, like have a big launch in the fall. That's what we're doing in my business. We're eyeing a launch, just so you know, sometime in the October to November timeframe. And we are thinking it through and we're being very conscientious about it. It may not hold, but that's what we're looking at right now. So that's what I would say. 
if you're asking my opinion, and since you're here listening to me, I, I gather you sometimes think I know some things. So the four big pieces, kind of everything else that we talked about before this, I was giving you information, I was giving you what we're seeing, but here's my prescription. Number one, your messaging has to deal with and talk about uh, the coronavirus, the situation, everything we're in. I don't mean everything you talk about it, but you can't ignore it and you got to be genuine about it and understand and give yourself some grace. But also what I would say is give other people grace. Understand that some people may make some mistakes in messaging and don't take it personally. Don't be like that guy who decided to like, you know, mark eight of my prior emails as spam. I mean, you know, hopefully you know people well enough to not have that kind of um, reaction. But give yourself some grace, but also give some give other people grace. But the first point is be genuine and address it. Second piece, now is a great time to do the behind the scenes work. If it's building a course, if it's building a membership, if it's, it's setting up your systems, if it's working on your content, if it's redoing a funnel, those kinds of things, now is a great time. And, and, and maybe it's only a great time because we... Um, shiny object entrepreneurs need something to force our hand. But because of that, take advantage. You know, use this time wisely to do those things. Third, build your audience right now. Now is a great time to be building your audience. You, you could get leads in at a good price. So attract them. People are on social. Engage with people. Get them into your world and nurture them. And spend time building relationships, turn them into a fan, and, and think of that as a big task in and of itself. And sell if you were going to sell. Don't, don't run away from selling. Don't say, I'm not going to sell. I can't sell right now. But have right-sized right sized expectations. Don't bet the farm right now. Be reasonable, and, and you know, and you'll, you'll weather this well. And, and I, I tell you all this because I believe if you do all of these things, you're just positioning your business. Like if you look at a lot of things I talked about, if you're being genuine, if you're talking about these things, guess what? You're going to build a connection with your audience. They're going to connect with you and, and that's going to make them like you even more. If you do the things behind the scenes, guess what you're doing? You're setting your business up, creating kind of the machine in your business to make you money over the long term. And if you build your audience, guess what you're doing? You're, you're, you're priming the pump so that when things are starting to, when we start to turn the corner, you're going to be in good shape and you're selling to pay the bills, but you're not going crazy. So if you think about it, basically what I'm telling you to do are the things we should always be doing, but especially now. And the entrepreneurs who take this time to actually build their business, to, to do the work behind the scenes, they're going to come out of this and they're going to be ready to thrive whenever it is that we come out of this. And so again, what, what I'm saying is things are going to suck over the short term for a little bit. You know, I don't know what that means. I just mean they're not going to be as good as they were two months ago. But I have every belief that over the long term, the entrepreneurs who put in the work, who do things right, will be positioned to, to build the badass businesses of their dreams. And I want you to be one of those entrepreneurs. So that's my call to action today. That's it for this episode. Join me on my new Facebook Live Friday episodes this Friday on my page, Noon Eastern Time. If you're on my email, email list, you're going to get an email about it, but I would love to see you live on Facebook. Talk to you later. That's it for this episode of the Certified Badass Online Marketing Podcast. Make sure to tune in next time. And in the meantime, go out and build the badass business of your dreams.